Hi, my name is Nick, and today I'm going to show you a simple method on how to coat and protect your inkjet canvas. Here we go. All right, so before we get started, I'm going to show you some of the supplies you're going to need to properly coat your canvas. So in front of me, I got, today I'm going to be using the Premier Art Eco Shield. I'll be using a gloss sheen today. Um, what else you'll need if you're going to be rolling it on by hand? Uh, a high density foam roller. You want to get the high density foam roller cover because it's not going to leave any trailing lint behind on your canvas. And then also you're going to need a paint tray, cover, uh, paint tray to house all the liquid in to, while you're rolling it on. Uh, also, you'll need a canvas. So I'm, I'm printed this image on the Epson Exhibition matte canvas. And I'm going to show you how it looks and, and the proper techniques to coat your canvas by hand. So here we go. So on this example here, we have one side that is coated and the other side that's not. So on the right side, you'll notice that you'll have an uncoated print. That is just the ink on the matte coated canvas. On the left side, you'll see the gloss overcoat that we put on from the Premier Art Eco Shield. We carry a couple different types of coverings and one of them's made by Marabou and it's called Clear Shield. And again, the other one is the Premier Art Eco Shield. And it comes in a variety of sheens. You'll notice that uh, if you want to keep that matte finish, there's a matte coating, there's a satin coating, there's a semi-gloss coating, and a gloss coating. So next, we're going to get into the techniques and how to properly roll on your coating. OK, so I have my canvas. I have my tray with my Premier Art Eco Print Shield gloss coating in the tray here. And really, the primary reason we're doing this is you know, this coating, once dry, is going to protect this canvas print from harmful UV rays that might fade your canvas and also just scratching or any kind of abrasion that could happen while it's up on the wall. Uh, this stuff is gonna do the trick to protect this thing for a, lo for a long time. And then also, uh, it also makes the flexible, uh, the canvas more flexible when you're stretching it. So you, it reduces any cracking um, that you might get on the corners when you're stretching the canvas around your wrap bars. So first here, what we like to do is get a nice, nice, uh, coating of the, uh, the print shield on here. And then we just start uh, rolling this on like you're painting a wall. Um, so we just want to make sure that we're uh, giving it a nice healthy douse of liquid on here. And then we're going to go back over this another time uh, just to make sure we remove any of these lines that you see um, on the canvas here. So you want to give it a, not a firm pressure, but kind of right in the middle where you're getting a nice coat all the way across. And then before I'm done here, because canvas has so many nooks and crannies in it from the weave, we actually want to rotate the print 90 degrees and do, go one more time over the canvas again. And then as you're coating here, you might notice as this dries, a slight white tint or film that comes over the canvas. So it's not gonna look clear right off the bat. So it, the, the, the Premier Eco Shield needs about 10 to 15 minutes to dry before you apply the second coating. So we're gonna go ahead and let this one dry. And then we're gonna uh, come back and coat the, the second coat and then they'll be finished. So we'll be back in 15 minutes. All right, welcome back. So now that my first coat has, is a little dry to the touch now here, we're gonna add the second coat. So something that I didn't mention in the beginning, we, uh, for this liquid, it can be a little bit uh, tentative if you leave the cap open. So you wanna make sure when you're not using it, you close the cap tightly. Um, and that'll prevent from any of the, the surface part of it drying. Um, and then prior to use, you also want to make sure that you shake this pretty well too, to, to make sure that all the chemicals are mixed together. So now I'm going to apply my second coat here, you know, and make sure we get all the edges here. So the second coat, you don't need to use as much as the first coat, because 
The first coat is really the, 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 the key first step to making sure that we get enough coating on this canvas. And you'll notice that sound, that sound you hear almost sounds like a Velcro sound. That's when you know you have the proper amount on this canvas. So when you hear that sound, That's what you want to hear. Okay. All right, so now that I have most of my lines out of here, we're gonna go ahead and let this dry for probably about an hour or two. You can follow the instructions on the back of, your, uh, back of the bottles of the product that you're using, but you don't want to rush too far into, to, you know, get ahead of yourself to uh, stretching the canvas too fast. So you want to make sure this is, you know, properly dried. And uh, once you're done, you uh, can go ahead and, and wrap your canvas on the stretcher bars and enjoy it for years to come. Some of the reasons why you would want to coat your canvas with a, a liquid laminate is, is mostly for durability. Um, the pigmented inks that are in your aqueous ink sets are resilient to a point, but they're not as good as protecting themselves from UV rays as say an eco solvent, a UV ink, or a latex ink. So when they're using an aqueous uh, printer to print on canvas, almost everybody is, is doing this uh, coating process. So it's gonna protect it from UV rays to reduce any fading of color. It's gonna give it excellent abrasion resistance and waterproof uh, the inks. So basically your, your inks become untouchable when you're uh, after it's coated. Um, another thing I had to mention here is the, the method. So today we're going to be rolling on the, the coating, which is the cheapest and easiest way to do it when you're getting into this. More advanced way of coating would be using a, uh, a spray gun. So some people use Wagner sprayers and some people have a more intense, more professional coating system that they use to spray on the canvas. That requires you know, a mask and a special spray booth and it can be pretty messy. Um, but if you're doing lots of canvases, that seems to be the next step that people take. And the third step is a liquid laminator. So more expensive, you need more space for the machine, but it is an excellent way to get a nice even coat across canvas. And you see these in shops that are doing lots and lots of prints um, day in and day out. Uh, another mention I'd like to make too is if you're interested in completely skipping the coating process, if you feel like it takes too much time, it's extra money, more labor costs, you can start to look into an eco-solvent printer or a latex printer. Uh, Epson S80 seems to be the most popular printer to migrate to because of its nine color ink set. So you'll see the high volume, high production canvas producers migrating from aqueous machines up into the uh, either the Epson S80 or one of the HP Latex units. And the reason being is you actually don't need to coat the canvas after. So it completely eliminates that process of coating canvases with the liquid, whether you roll it, spray it, have a liquid laminator, and you can print and take that straight to the wrap bars. Because of the ink's durability, you can get away with not having to coat it and uh, it'll last for years. Yeah, I'd like to thank you for joining me. Remember, IT Supplies has everything for the perfect print. So whether you need the equipment, the coating liquid, the liquid laminators, the canvas, we have it all. So please give us a call if you have any questions on how to coat canvas or what supplies you need to coat canvas. And don't forget to subscribe, like, or comment below if you have any questions or concerns. Thanks again and have a great day.